Hey, what's up you guys? Josh here with the RC Recon channel and today we've got the last little bits to install onto the Fortec 3.0 before we go and give it its maiden voyage to see if it'll hit 100 miles an hour. So what we've got here is a couple of parts to help stiffen up the chassis even more. So these are both by GPM Racing. Pretty much all the Fortec guys suggest getting them. Here I've got the black aluminum parts and it's GTO49RA-BK and GTO49FT-BK. So these are stabilizers for, you can see here it says rods with stabilizer for C-hub front tie rods and then aluminum rear tie rods with stabilizer. So I'm going to go ahead and get these installed. I'll try to step through the process that I take to install them and I'm going to do that same um, thin tape idea for the screws to keep everything really stiff. I've also got some extra shims. These are different sizes, so 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3 in thickness. And I've got two packs of 10 each, so that should be plenty to fill up any gap in like the A arms or just anything like that to help tighten up the suspension even more. Lastly, I already had these two foam tires and went ahead and bought two more because the wider ones, I think they were 45 millimeter, they were um, too wide and they didn't quite fit in the rear without spacers and I really didn't want spacers. So 32 millimeter wide all the way around. They're about as big as the rear tires. So those all the way around. It's going on the Fortec. Let's go ahead and get started. So the tires were going last, of course, and this, I'm not going to show on video, but essentially you guys just take the arms out. If there's any play in them, add a shim, try to tighten that up. Not to the point where you can't put the pin on or the arm won't move up and down, but just to fill in that gap a little bit. So let's start with the front. Let me go ahead and move the camera so I can sit next to the car and then we'll get started. All right, so I didn't see any instructions for these, but I do have a couple pictures to use kind of as a guide. And of course, you guys can use this video as your guide. Should be pretty self-explanatory though. That's the middle piece. Nice. Oh, these are really, really stiff. I like that. Very tight fit. So, should do the job at stiffening it up. So these are supposed to go onto the hubs like this. So it looks like it may replace some of these links. And from what I can tell, it's going to replace this link. Are these adjustable? I think they are. To give it a spin. Yeah. So that's how we would end up adjusting. Well, you guys, it's a little unfortunate, but because of the way that I have the battery mount system, this isn't going to fit here because this needs to mount across these two screws right here and the edge of this is hitting right there. I'm not going to be able to use this until I find a different solution for the front unfortunately. So we're going to set that aside and we'll focus on stiffening up the rear. Well, it looks like it's the same deal for the rear not going to be able to do it because of how I have this mounted up. So I'm going to have to, because I, I, I want to use this stuff. So I'm going to have to come up with a different solution for the battery mounts. I'm going to have to do, I think a strap instead of this. All right, you guys. So since I know that I'm going to have to swap out the the way that I hold the battery down to a strap style. I went ahead and took that off, took the spacers out, and now I'm going to go ahead and install these parts. I'm just kind of eyeballing it here, seeing how it's all going to go together. Looks like we're going to have the longest screws in the middle. These will go to the front, and then the medium sized screws are going to go through here, I believe. I'll just swing those out of the way for now. Looks like 
this just sits down right on top of there. And <laughs> our motor gets in the way. Got those two, and then this should drop right into place. take the countersunk screws, I'm sure. All right, let me take a closer look and then I'll show you guys how it goes together. All right, you guys, so unfortunately there's pretty much no installation videos online for this that I'm seeing, so. And no instructions. So we're just gonna figure this out together. So I've got this front piece on that screwed in that was pretty easy to figure out let's go ahead and remove these two links here and here now this link comes with a little spacer one that we would replace with the new one so we'll do that just because it, the new one comes with it And to start, I'm just going to make sure everything fits properly before putting the tape on the screws. All right, we'll drop that down in there. Now it comes with two more, but I don't think these would be used anywhere. It comes with two spacers. And it looks like in order for this to sit down nicely without a bunch of twist, we're going to need one of those aluminum spacers right under here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go aluminum spacer here and aluminum spacer here. That will bring that level up just a bit so then it looks like these two smaller screws here are gonna screw into here and then for the other four we have two longer ones and two that are just a little bit shorter because of the spacers and just kind of eyeballing it looks like the longer ones are going to go through here and the shorter ones through here so let me go ahead and test fit that see if it works now of course this link isn't connected up here but I'm just looking at the arms it does seem to be helping so Everything still moves really well. I think I'm gonna go with this. I think it's gonna work. And I think that the steps that we took to get that installed, and I'm just kind of looking. I think that spacer is so that this can adjust. Yeah, for sure so that that can move and have its full range so I think we've got it figured out here and then if we were 
going to make any adjustments, it would be through these pins. And that extends it out. That adjusts our camber. And then probably the combination of this rod and this one down here would adjust our toe in. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Just this one down here is our toe in. This is just for stability, so. Cool, I'm going to go ahead and install the other side and use the tape method. I'll see if I can figure out something for the rear, but this motor is too tall for the rear. But the rear seemed to be a little bit easier anyways to figure out where everything went. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the other side and then I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done. All right, you guys, so front is all finished. Got the tape, Loctite screwed in and Loctite is setting up. Definitely feels much stiffer up front. So I'm gonna dial in the toe in, make sure my angles are still the same. Hopefully these were set pretty good from the factory. These are, I don't know exactly. So if we extend this, that's gonna push this wheel out. So we really wanna to try to tighten those up. They feel pretty tight already. So I don't think I'm gonna mess with those too much unless it's needed to fix any camber issues. The toe in, of course, I'll check as well. But that's pretty much it. There's not really too many videos about this, so hopefully this helped you guys. If you have any questions at all, be sure to let me know. I'll be happy to answer them. As far as the rear, I'm just gonna to have to leave it off for now until I figure out what I might be able to do differently. Maybe I can raise this up from back here when I go to if I take these off instead of just connecting it directly there I can raise it up a little bit I'm not sure I'll figure something out and then I'll let you guys know all right you guys very quick update here I was able to get this to fit by just raising up right in there this mount and I was wondering if raising that up would cause it to destabilize but it's definitely not the case and the movement comparison from this side before I actually finish that side, the movement forward and back, it was very minimal compared to much easier to move on this side. So definitely worthwhile upgrade, even with raising that up because of the bigger motor. If you guys were gonna install this and you didn't have the bigger motor, of course you can do the same thing just without those spacers. I was gonna use these since they were extra from the front, but I had a, a bunch of these lying around and those worked out perfectly. And then I actually used longer screws. These are from a steering rack from a Bandit, <laughs> but they were the perfect length to screw into here and then screw into the plastic. So be very, very careful. You're gonna want you're gonna feel the urge to really tighten it down, but as soon as you feel that start to grab and it gets a little bit stiffer to screw in, stop there because then you'll start to strip out plastic. So much stiffer, really happy with it. Looking at the toe in on the rear, looks good. If I need to change it, I can of course adjust this one down here and that will pull that wheel in just a little bit. But the rear is like super, super nice and stiff, um, but it's still got you know some shock action. If I wanted to, I can take maybe two of these out and raise the rear up a little bit, but it's finished. I have to get a different battery mounting solution here, something where I can either drill into the chassis and countersink screws so that it's like this, but just over here, I'm thinking one mount here and one mount here, and then just run a strap over it. And that will be, I think, plenty because that battery I'm using, that 6S battery is so tight in here anyways, really just one strap over the, over the front will really help. I gotta adjust my toe in the front, but this is pretty much finished. Gonna put the foams on. And then next time you guys see this, it's gonna have that battery strap um, because doing an installation of that, it's not really gonna be necessary. You'll just drill out some holes, countersink it, and then screw it down, put a strap on it. But 
it's done, man. This thing looks phenomenal. All right. Subscribe if you want to see the first run. Hopefully, we hit 100 miles an hour right off the gate and we can stop. No, I'm just kidding. It never ends. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.